Stony Brook University. By default, each time you press Run in Processing, a visual output window appears. Even though processing focuses on a visual output, adding audio to your visual sketches can be achieved by installing a single library called Minim. Minim is an external audio library whose philosophy is to make integrating audio into your sketches as simple as possible while still providing a reasonable amount of flexibility for more advanced users. In this video, I'll be covering the basics of adding audio to your sketches. With Minim, you'll be able to play back WAV, AIFF, and MP3, providing great flexibility when it comes to integrating audio into your sketches. Let's get started working with audio and processing. Okay, here we are in processing and I've created a new sketch. And I've placed into the sketch several comment lines outlining the steps that we'll be taking to add audio to our sketch in processing. I'm going to show you two different ways to work with audio in processing. The first is going to use the audio player variable to simply play back a file upon launching your sketch. The second is going to use the audio sample variable, allowing you to trigger the playback of an audio file using a keyboard press. So to get started, first I'm going to show you how to import the minim library files. Processing makes this very easy. To do so, click on sketch at the top of the menu, go down to import library, and select minim. At this point, you can see that processing will paste all the necessary import calls, giving you full access to all of Minim's functionality. Now, if you know which import calls you need to make yourself, you can type those in on your own without going to sketch and import library. For instance, I know in this sketch, we're only going to be using the basics. So we're only going to need to use this import ddf.minim.star semicolon. So let me clean up my code a little bit here and we'll move on to adding our global variables. So we're going to create two global variables. The first is simply creating an instance of minim itself. This is going to allow us to access the functionality of minim. Then we're going to add an audio player variable. This is audio player with camel case. And I'm going to call this bells because we're going to be playing back a bell file that I have on my desktop here. Let's take a listen to that now. Okay, so we've created our two global variables, one to give us access to the minimum function and another to play back our bells file. Now I'm going to create the setup code block to load the sound file into the memory. So I'm going to type void setup, open and close my parentheses, open and close my curly brackets. In our setup code, we're going to define the contents for both of our global variables, the minim and the bells. So first I'll say that minim is simply going to be a new instance of the minim class. So I'll type minim equals new, then capital minim with this as the argument for the contents. That's simply going to define this minim variable as a new generic instance of the minim class. Then I'm going to define the contents of the bells. So I'll type bells equals, and I'm going to use the pointer for minim, which is minim.load file. And I'm going to type the file that I'll be loading in quotations. That's bell.wave and I'll close my parentheses and close that line of code. And at this time, I recommend that you go ahead and save your sketch and add your sound file to your sketch. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, select my desktop, I'll call this Working With Audio, and then I'm gonna to go to Sketch, Add File, select the file, bell.wave, click Open, and confirm that one file has been added to the sketch. I'll also open up that folder, and that audio file should be in the data folder of my sketch, and there it is. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, one more thing we're going to do in the setup function is we're going to tell the file to play back immediately once the sketch is run. So to do that, I'm going to type bells.play. 
and this is going to call the command to play back the audio file. For the drop code block, we're not going to be doing anything. So I'm simply going to create a placeholder for this and set the background as black. So I'll type background zero, and that's going to set the contents of the background to black. So at this point, we have everything we need set up to play back our bell.wave audio file as soon as we hit run. So let's try that out here. Excellent. So as you can see there, we've imported our minim files. We declared an instance of minim and also an instance of the audio player. We filled the contents of minim with an instance of the minim function. We filled the contents of bell with the file on our hard drive, bell.wave, and then we told bells to play immediately upon setup. For the draw code block, well, we left that empty. So everything works well. So this is the scenario if you want to play an audio file back in its entirety upon running your sketch. So let's make a few changes and I'll show you how you can use a key press to trigger an audio sample. So we're going to make a few modifications to our code in order to do that. On this audio player line, I'm going to change this call for audio player to audio sample. In my setup code, where it says bells equals minim dot load file, I'm going to change that to bells equal minim dot load sample. And because I don't want the audio file to play right away, I'm going to get rid of this line of code that says bells dot play. I'm going to leave the draw code block exactly as it is because we won't be doing any drawing in this sketch. Down here, I'm going to set up a simple key trigger allowing us to trigger the sample with a key press. To do so, I'm going to type void key pressed, open and close my parentheses, open and close my curly brackets. And inside of key pressed, I'm going to check to see if the B key is pressed, that it should both trigger the sample and then send a line to the console letting me know that the trigger was sampled. So I'll type if and then I'll open my parentheses, key is equal to B in single quotes. I would like the bells file to be triggered. Open and close parentheses, semicolon. Because processing is a visually oriented programming language, by default, the output of every sketch is a canvas. But occasionally when you're programming, you would like to send output to the console. The console is this black area in the bottom here where processing sends messages. But you can also send messages to yourself, letting you know that your program has executed specific functions. In this case, I'm going to write a second line, which is also checking the B key. And if the B key is pressed, I want to send a message to the console letting me know that the trigger was sampled. To do that, I'm going to use the print line function. That's print line. And then I'm going to open a parentheses and I'm going to put the argument that I want it to print as a text message, which says sample triggered. Put that in quotations, close your parentheses and close your statement. And now when I launch this sketch and I press the B key, you'll notice that both the audio file plays back through the speakers and the console prints the line sample triggered. Now something that's cool about triggering samples is that you can trigger them multiple times. And to do that, you simply repress the key and the sample will overlap on top of itself. So now if I press the B key several times simultaneously, I'm able to use processing like a musical instrument, playing the instrument using keyboard presses. So this has been an overview of working with audio and processing. I have showed you how to use the audio sample call to use samples, as well as the audio player call to simply play back an audio file.